Hey, my name is Gavin Bishop. I'm a medical student and tutor at the University of Otago, and I've spent the last three years playing around with different programs, apps, and Chrome extensions to try to make my life as a student a bit easier. We all know that like in theory, there's all of these useful things out there, uh, but in practice, it can be really hard to find something that actually works. So this is my attempt uh, to make the video that I wish I could have shown myself uh, three years ago uh, about how I would really use technology to make my life as easy as possible. It's gonna be split into five parts. Uh, firstly, laptop programs and apps. Uh, secondly, Chrome extensions. Thirdly, note-taking and system apps. Uh, fourthly, some mobile apps for your phone, but also your iPad. And finally, finishing off with just some assorted random tips that I wish I knew before I began as a student. There's gonna be timestamps down below, so feel free to skip around to what's useful for you. Just a quick message on operating systems. Uh, I used to be a massive Windows guy up until last year. I'm gonna be showing all of these things from a MacBook Air, but most of the apps that I show today uh, will have equivalents on both systems and I'll mention if they do not. Right, so starting off, programs for your laptop. Uh, the first one that I wanna talk about is tiling programs. Uh, for Mac, rectangle. Let's say you've opened up a program window. Uh, you want to move it to the left side of the screen. Now you could drag it and make you know, all of these things fit properly. Um, or you could just use a keyboard shortcut and move it to the right-hand side like you want, the left-hand side, the top, or the bottom. Um, if you wanna make it full screen. Uh, rectangle allows you to customize these shortcuts. For me, I use Control, Option, and then the arrow keys. Uh, a lot of Windows laptops will just allow you to go Windows and then arrow keys uh, to make that however you want. Um, if not, you can download equivalent program AquaSnap. After that, I wanna talk about probably my most used app, which is Alfred. It's hard to understate how useful Alfred is as a tool for getting places uh, quickly on your uh, device. Let's say you wanna bring up like a cover letter. You just hit command space uh, and then find your file, which is cover letter, and it opens up immediately. By the way, I recommend using Chrome as your default PDF reader rather than like Adobe or something. You can also search inside files. I'm currently um, doing a research project on health systems, uh, and I know that one thing works on private ownership. Uh, so if I remember that I wrote that somewhere, I typed an in and then private ownership. It's already found it. Um, it's in my health systems notes document and I open it up and it immediately brings it there. And where is it? Ah, uh, here we are. Private business ownership right there. But Alfred does a lot more for programming specific searches that you use for your course. For instance, when studying pharmacology and medicine, uh, we often have to go to the New Zealand formulary. Uh, now you could open um, Chrome and type in NZ formulary and then click over here, and then click launch NZ formulary, and then uh, type Silazapril, and then you've got it there. Or just program your own specific search for the New Zealand formulary like I have. I've put it under the key N. So all I do is command space, N space, Silazapril. And then from anywhere, it automatically opens up the New Zealand formulary. You can do the same thing with Google Keep. You can do the same thing with Google Maps. Uh, let's go Auckland. Um, and that shows up right there. Very useful programmable searches. Anything you do routinely, you can make in just a few keystrokes. The next thing I wanted to mention is the 365 Office package. Extremely useful as a student. Uh, that comes with things like OneNote, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, uh, and also OneDrive. Uh, this often comes free with your university. It certainly comes free with the University of Otago, and a lot of people don't know this because it's a really good place to store stuff. And you can also use the online versions. The next category I'd like to talk about is Chrome extensions, uh, starting off with the most important one, uh, EndNote Click. This is an invaluable tool you can use um, as an academic researcher, and I'll show you why. Let's say we wanted to look up an academic article um, on memory. Let's say Active Recall, um, and we did it on like EPUB, for instance. So that's gonna show up. Uh, let's scroll down. Oh, this one looks all right. Uh, let's click on this link. Now, the problem with a lot of these things is that they're paywalled. You can't get access to anything um, beyond the abstract if you're just in a normal um, situation. However, what EndNote Click does is it brings up this little icon over here and it finds a version on the internet which you can look at. And if there's no version on the internet, if it's all paywalled, you also log in your Otago credentials onto EndNote Click. And because you're with the university, you have access to a bunch of journals that you wouldn't have as just a normal person. So now I can click on View PDF and no longer do I just have access to the abstract, I also have access to 
the entire article. Very convenient and no click. Now the next thing that's really important to me is being able to search uh, the entirety of my OneNote library. Um, and I found that a lot of the time when you download a PDF and then you insert it into OneNote, it's no longer searchable any of the text on the slides. However, if you use the clip to OneNote Chrome extension, uh, it will, so if I just search identity and then we find it. Moving on to section three, that's note taking and flashcard apps. I just like to start off with OneNote, uh, which is probably the most popular cross-platform uh, note-taking app. OneNote is very useful. It's got a nice filing system uh, and you can put your lecture slides all in, in a row like that. And it's really nice because it has all of this space out to the side that you can then write with effectively infinitely. Uh, so there's a lot of space available um, there, which is something that you don't really get in apps like Notability. It has an all right searching function. It's not as good as the others, um, but its strength is really that it works across all platforms. You can have an account on your Mac or your iPad or your Windows, and it goes all between them. Um, and you can hook it up to your OneDrive storage that comes free with the university. And it also has handwriting support. Um, so if you like using a stylus um, on top of things, it's quite good with that. Next up, we have Anki. Uh, now, if you have to memorize or cram anything into your head uh, for the purposes of your university course, you definitely want to take a look at Anki. Uh, Anki is a flashcarding app, uh, which is similar to Quizlet, if you've seen it before, but with a lot more functionality. It has some built-in active recall and space repetition systems. I'm looking to, in the future, make a video about how I use these different apps as a study system, but that would make this video way too long. So just really briefly, uh, Anki, um, the flashcard pops up and you can then tell it, was it easy, hard, or, um, you like it really hard again. Um, and then from that, it keeps spitting them back at you until you tell it you got it. And then it has a smart algorithm that works on the forgetting curve, uh, which imagines that our time over time that we forget things at an exponential rate. And we wanna try and interrupt this before it happens. Kind of keep the balloon in the air at like an ever increasing interval. Uh, using this kind of thing, we can think progressively uh, take longer gaps before we have to re-remember the thing. Um, one thing that it's really useful for is memorizing diagrams. So let's say I've got like my MSK lecture here. This is the acetabulum of the femur and I'd really like to memorize that. So what I'm gonna do is go into Anki, um, find my test deck, um, add some cards to it, and I'm gonna use an image occlusion. I then snip a bit of this uh, diagram from the slides and then move it over and click on this button right here. This brings it up in the image occlusion enhanced uh, window, and I just draw boxes over the things that I want to remember. Now you can group them together or you can have them separately. I'm gonna have them separately here and I'm gonna click hide all, guess one. Now, in the future, that was all it took, like literally two seconds. And now if I go and do this deck, I'm going to click study now and I get something that looks like this. There's, if I use rectangle to open up to full screen, uh, there's a red box over the thing I'm meant to answer, and when I hit spacebar, it opens. Now I say, oh, that was hard, um, so I put it there, and it will come up again. Now the next one comes up, and I have to look at that. Really nice for cramming, especially visual uh, data, into your head. Uh, would definitely recommend using it. After that, we have a iOS and Mac only app, which is Notability. It's a really nice app for uh, taking really nice handwritten notes with your iPad that you can also access um, from your uh, laptop if you have a Mac laptop. And also, there's no additional space off to the side where you can add text in. You can only add text into the document itself, which is why I recommend doing the kind of four pages per sheet thing um, or six pages per sheet um, like this, and then you can kind of write in the margins in between them. Uh, text search is quite good. In fact, it's so good that it can pick up handwriting. And usefully with Notability, all of the pages are indexed uh, so that they can be found by spotlight search no matter where you are on your laptop. So uh, let's say I wanna take a look at the uh, metabolism study buddy. Um, I can look at metabolism revision and just bring it up immediately. Whatever particular document you want, as long as you know the name of it, you can bring up that lecture pretty much instantly. Uh, neuro overview. Brilliant. And it predicts the names for you. Also very useful for open book exams for getting to the exact resources you want in a matter of seconds. If you don't like Notability style for annotating PDFs, you can also use PDF Expert or GoodNotes. Uh, they're both quite useful, but have their own individual drawbacks. After that, we have an app called Notion. Uh, Notion is where I've written the script for this video. Uh, and it's also really good for note-taking. People have entire study systems built in there. There's a lot of customizability. 
uh, just some key points because uh, you can take forever on it. Uh, it's got these toggle features, which is really nice for taking notes. Um, you can make everything really small and then you can open it up uh, for more information about the topic. Uh, so really good for taking notes and kind of questioning yourself there. In terms of searchability, it's all right. Um, the search everything function is a little bit slow. Uh, it's quite nice searching within a page, but when you just wanna search everything, it's a bit slow. So if you are gonna sit an open book exam with like Notion, I'd recommend exporting it all as a PDF um, and then you can use a PDF app uh, like Chrome or Adobe um, to just control F within that or command F within that. Um, and that will be a lot faster than using uh, Notion itself. Um, although really nice uh, just for everyday use and for developing your kind of second brain. I'll probably run through my actual study method uh, using these apps in a future video. So subscribe if you're interested in that. Uh, but until then, I'll just keep mentioning some of the other apps that I like to use. An app that poses itself as a solution to the problem uh, we really like Anki and its spaced repetition problems, and we really like our note-taking apps such as Notion. However, we wish that we could have both functionalities in the same uh, setup. Uh, with Anki, uh, notoriously, uh, everything is broken down into flashcards, which are really nice and useful to access and really easy to search, but all of the information is rather compartmentalized. And because it's so compartmentalized, it's not quite useful as a note-taking database. It's really trying to figure out those leaves of the tree of knowledge rather than the tree itself. So wouldn't it be nice if we could take all of those flashcards and attach it to a note-taking software? Well, that's what RemNote attempts to do. Um, it does have um, ways that you can pin certain areas of PDF and link um, to that. However, it doesn't have the same kind of handwriting support or PDF editing support uh, that things like OneNote and Notability do. And thus, it's not something that I personally use. I describe RemNote as halfway between Notion and uh, the eccentric app Rome Research uh, with some of the capabilities of Anki. I should probably throw Zoom in here somewhere. And the uni gives you a free, uh, like the full version of it, um, which can be useful uh, to download. It's also nice to have on your phone just to be a bit more mobile. Next up, not something that I personally use, but something that I hear a lot from my computer science and surveying friends is that when you want to deal with data, Notepad++ is much better than Notepad. Swapping over to mobile apps, uh, we have the app Instapaper. Now, Instapaper is really useful for whenever you come across an article that you'd really like to read at some point in the future, uh, but don't want to read right now. You can send it through and it makes this really nice readable offline copy uh, that you can then access like when you're sitting on the bus or sitting on the train or sitting in a car in the future uh, with no internet access and you can just read it really nicely uh, the whole way through. After that, I'd like to talk about 3D Anatomy. This is the best 3D anatomy app I found. Uh, it allows you to take a look at different aspects of the human body in 3D. And now this is extremely useful if you're wanting to learn uh, different parts of anatomy um, and you're really struggling to picture um, the, how the parts relate to each other in real life. You can take away different layers. I found it particularly useful in the nervous system module. I was able to take a look at structures like the putamen and the corpus callosum, as well as the ventricles, and see how their 3D shapes um, fit in relation to each other. Like this right here is the amygdala. Uh, how does the amygdala fit uh, with the hippocampus? Uh, well, there it is. It's a lot easier in 3D, and you have to picture this. Uh, for a lot of these tests, they give you 2D slices, but the slices could be at any level. So understanding how it works in three dimensions will make those 2D slices just so much easier. After that, we have Libby, um, which is the best library app. It allows you to put in your library card or even multiple library cards and then get out eBooks as well as audiobooks free. Um, you just have to go on the wait list if it's particularly popular. It's phenomenal. I've just finished listening to Lifespan. I'm about to start reading Nudge, although it looks like it might expire soon. On the topic of audiobooks, we also have Audible, which of course is awesome for audiobooks, but it's a paid service. Next we have Blinkist, which is like a book summarizing app. Not really as a replacement to books, but more to get an overview of books that I wouldn't have read otherwise. So for instance, some of the kind of old philosophical texts by Kant or maybe something by Karl Marx, 
or maybe like a few different uh, books on crypto or something like that, that I wouldn't take the time to read the whole thing, but I'd like an overview summary of it. And of course, if you really like the book summary, you can just go and read uh, the book afterwards. Now this is a paid subscription, uh, but we split it with a few friends and I think you have unlimited splits. So if you get enough friends together, it's pretty good. Next up, we have Scannable for things like receipts and documents. It's my PDF scanner of choice. Waking Up and Headspace, which are two awesome mindfulness meditation apps. Next up, we have the University of Otago app. I only really use this for looking at buildings that I haven't been to before um, because they're not like all of the individual buildings in the university are not listed on Google Maps. Uh, so you can use that to find it. Photo Roulette, you send through like 40 photos from your camera roll and they all get mixed in kind of Kahoot style amongst everyone's phones. And then you have to guess really quickly uh, whose camera roll the video is from, a lot of fun. Then we have the One Second Every Day app. Uh, some of you might've seen my previous video uh, where I put together One Second Every Day. Uh, this app is really useful for making that easy. Shortcuts. Now I've heard you can do a lot of things with this. Uh, one of my flatmates actually has a script that he can put on shortcuts on the phone uh, that then sends the entire B-movie script to someone in text messages until their phone dies. Section four of things that I would tell my younger self is learn some keyboard shortcuts and try to learn them earlier uh, because civilization advances by extending the number of important things that we can do without thinking about them. The first one is a snipping tool. This is Windows Shift S on Windows, or you can do nice on left hand. And for some stupid reason is Command Control Shift 4 on Macs. Uh, which is just requires two hands, it's four keys, it's ridiculous for something so important. So I recommend changing that, uh, probably just to the Windows version of Windows Shift S or Command Shift S, uh, which works well. For swapping between apps, you can use Alt Tab or Command Tab, which is convenient because it's in the exact same place. So uh, whether you're in Mac or Windows. Hitting Backspace, if you hit Backspace multiple times, you're wasting your time. You can use Option Backspace to delete one word at a time or Command Backspace to delete one line at a time. It really is a lot faster. Windows D to show the desktop, um, and you can reprogram that to Command D if you'd like um, on Mac to show the desktop. You can also use Command Enter to send an email uh, without having to click the Send uh, button, and this works on both Outlook and Gmail. And lastly, uh, some random tips. Blue light filters are extremely important uh, for your sleep health. Definitely put uh, that kind of orange night mode, night shift, um, or f.lux as an app that you can download. If you're ever struggling with a file format thing, uh, you can just Google it. Uh, so if you wanna convert a JPEG to a PNG, or like literally yesterday, I was trying to convert an EPUB um, ebook file to a PDF. So I just literally just Googled um, EPUB to PDF converter. And then you Google that and it's the first link that comes up. If it's not the first, it'll be like the second. There's a million of these pro free programs online that are extremely useful. You can save you a lot of hassle. Uh, don't try to use the actual apps, just Google it. Find my capability that makes your Apple devices ring uh, is extremely useful. Don't spend all your time searching, just type it in on one of the other ones. I'd also like to give a shout out to Facebook Messenger as an extremely useful study tool. When you get into studying at university, uh, you spend a lot of time uh, on your own. And it's really nice to have a small group or even just one other person in your class to send screenshots uh, using Windows Shift S, of course, uh, back and forth um, of stuff that confuses you and communicate um, in a really simple fashion. I'd really recommend uh, working with other people and not trying to solo it. You won't know all the things you don't know if you don't work with others. Messenger is really good for that. Um, now that I'm working on a research project, I'm actually starting to move over to Microsoft Teams, which is what a lot of businesses uh, and government organizations use if they don't use Slack. Um, however, I think as a student, Messenger is completely fine um, and way more capabilities than you need. Finally, uh, use some kind of password manager. Do not use the same password uh, for every account. It will get leaked eventually, and you do not want your valuable accounts to be merged because you signed up for some random uh, face editing account somewhere. Uh, even if you're just using Google Password Manager, that will get you a long way. Right, 45 minutes later, I think that's the end of the video. If you found any of that useful, um, or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to check a comment down below. Um, I'll try my best to answer it, or even better, if you have a suggestion or improvement on the way that I do things or an app that I didn't mention, I'd love to hear about it. I'm always looking uh, for ways to improve these sort of things. In general, I'm gonna try and keep making videos like this that I think would be well, valuable to a younger me, uh, as well as on just topics that I find interesting. If any of that sounds interesting to you, uh, do check a subscribe. If you're interested in how medical school works, I made a couple of videos over there up in the corner, um, or if you're just interested in seeing me take a kayak to the top of the mountain, or one second every day for my life, I've got a few more videos like that. Um, have a great day.